out this morning moving out a nuke yard. This nuke yard is a big one. There's a hundred nukes here and they've been good so far. I was in yesterday. I was trading with a little bit of Appy Life Far, just giving them a third of a, of a tablet. And they just, something seemed off. They seemed to be picking on each other. There's nothing around here. There's nothing but field and a little yard here in the center. So they obviously weren't out foraging and it wasn't foraging activity because they weren't up and out. It was a busy internal yard kind of not a frenzy but just busy and all the colonies were busy in and out in and out all of them i think they were picking on each other they're full of feed they're not being robbed out the bees are just cranky there's too many bees in this yard so i'm moving half of them out i have to do it before the sun gets and hits the yard here so i gotta be quick but I'm going to move out uh, 50, move it back to a holding yard, which is full of bees still. But it's going to be in a big open area, not this little weak confined yard in the middle of nowhere. So I'll take the pressure off the nukes. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to strip these pails off, their partials, and get them loaded up and get them out of here before they start flight. It was 15 degrees last night. Just beautiful corn maturing weather. Boy, it's been such a mild fall. If we could only predict what our falls were gonna be like, then maybe we could manage them just a little bit differently. Everything seems to be adjusted just a little bit further. But the thing is, we don't know. Loaded up and ready to go before they started flying. And that took the pressure off this yard. I can just feel it. <sighs> like a gasp of relief. And move them back home. So these pallets and lids nest really well. Just love them, especially moving. They don't shift as much. But I made a mistake one time as I put these two close together, especially in warm weather. They bearded and made a real mess. So I won't do that again. So I snug the uh, load, cinched it, you know, snug tight just to get me down the road and back home. Lots of air to breathe, especially because I have a thymol treatment I put in yesterday. And I do not like uh, disturbing colonies when I'm treating like this, especially after the first day, it, it is rule of thumb, actually. Leave them the hell alone. But the problem was the pressure in the yard and the picking on each other was a bigger problem. And, you know, sometimes in this business, you just have to do what you have to do. That's commercial beekeeping for you. Not that I want to do it. Just a situation I had seen and I have to act on it. They'll be fine. Before I go, the 3% count on this one, and then the other ones in the yard were about two and a half, one and a half, not as high, but still mites in here. So that's why I'm treating with a thymol. 
and I got it sticky down there. I just want to see what I got. So this will be one day drop. It's a homemade sticky. So it's not really a sticky, just a piece of cardboard. Might, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, about 23, 20, let's say about that, on the first day of drop. So that is good, purging these bees. just leave it here and see if I can get any more next time I'm in the yard I'll just check I rely on shakes to do all my mite monitoring but at the same time when I put these treatments in I want to see if there's drop Let's see if there is that efficacy right off the start my tick transfer lead had reached out to me we're in constant communication it's kind of nice actually because so I have that continual feedback loop from somebody who well this guy is a commercial beekeeper comes from a commercial beekeeping farm uh, in Saskatchewan but I'll forgive him for that but we've been in constant you know chit chat over phone and email about certain things and he's watching what I'm doing and it's not his place to tell me what to do that's my job but just providing me a little bit of feedback on what I am doing. And an interesting comment come from him as we're chit-chatting about this. He said, you know, with new products so far away on the marketplace, beekeepers are naturally going to be doing what I'm doing here, synergizing treatments. He said, maybe uh, the tech transfer programs across Canada need to spend some time on providing some guidance on the effect of synergizing treatments like this to get better efficacy for one thing or to better understand the mode of action and the conditions around using these products and he is right on the money and that is exactly what these tech transfer programs are for is to be on the ground with the beekeepers working with them during their problems and trying to help them sort out the issues and not leave all this damn citizen science for the beekeeper to have fall in his lap. Just provide some, somebody who is tasked with helping sort out all these issues and maybe identify these issues and then put together some trials to help bring answers to the beekeepers trying to use these products to manage these problems. And when he said that, I was just like, yes, that is exactly why we hired this guy.
taking a zero. So this is the colony that I shook last week before we put the thymol treatment on that we washed off a 5% mite count. Just a very small wash. This is another small one, only 100 days or so in there. Let us dig into another colony. When I was digging through that nest, I noticed that there's a little patch of brood. It seemed unaffected by the, by the treatment I put in. So I just randomly drop down into this nest. We still have feet up on top. populous nest well they definitely do not like this happy life bar it's starting to tear it apart now which is nice to see because I don't really want to have to come in and remove it I will if uh, when we come in to remove these strips I will be removing these tablets too if they're still there okay so Pulling on the legs there, back filling into the nest here. <clears throat> there is no brood in this colony, no brood whatsoever. Pull one more frame. I'll take the sample off this next frame. Oh yeah, there's brood. Mm -hmm. A little bit of open brood there. Obviously queen, right? Oh, well, there's some brood there. They're just off to the side a little bit. see her. I'll take a good look. See, let us see. Been monitoring the drop, and that happy life bar certainly has been dropping the mites. And to see to what extent. <clears throat> Zero. So they're not very big samples, but they are samples all the same. Zero, zero, zero. That is, I mean, I'm taking the same type of sample earlier and just getting immediate drop within the shaker. So the purge of mites has happened. Which is good. So now the question is, <clears throat> how much damage has that residual level of mites caused to the winter nest? And that I don't know. That I won't know until next spring. So 
So what I'm going to do is we're going to be following up with an oxalic acid vapor treatment, probably two, but not until the thymol is out of the nests. And what I mean by that is I want this nice warm weather to uh, dissipate it. So then when I apply oxalic acid, I'm not adding another compound to the mix of synergies that's going on within the nest. Man, I feel like a grain farmer. You know, using product, combination of products, uh, residue of those products, and just trying to manage the synergies of the products as we use them together and over a period of time. Zero.